Welcome to the first part of a major series based on training of the racehorse. Each month I'll be speaking to a different trainer on the various aspects of training and this month we're at John Gosden's to speak to him about the training of a sprinter. John's been based at Stanley House Stables in Newmarket for the last three years. The original yard was built in 1903 by Lord Derby and became the center of an equine dynasty that won 22 classics and included great horses such as Hyperion. Now the yard has been extensively renovated and with 121 boxes, it's one of the finest yards in Newmarket. For 10 years, John Gosden was a highly successful trainer in America. I asked him first what difference there was between an American and an English sprinter. Well, two things. First of all, as you know, sprinting in America, I need to tell you, is uh, on dirt always about the Laurel Dash, I should think it's about the only race that isn't. And it's around one turn, and that's usually a sharp turn on a mile track. Only Belmont would have really a sweeping turn, being a mile and a half track. So dirt and, and a turn, which makes it a far more important race from the gate. Jumping out, getting out there, getting position is, 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 is key importance. Whereas here, as you know, we sprint uh, on the straights, on grass. So that is the one big difference. Sprinters can look quite different to other horses. Let's first go and look at a typical stayer. John, this is a horse called Witness Box, a staying type horse. What do you see as the main attributes which make him a stayer? Right, well, we'll start with his pedigree. He's by Leafard out of Excellent Alibi, by Exceller, who was by Vaguely Noble. And he's of a staying family. It's a family of Dahlia and Daha. They're all good mile and a half horses. So of course you've got to start off with the pedigree. Secondly, he's quite a lengthy horse, good rein, decent depth to him, not, not, not enormously deep, but a decent depth to him. Quite a leggy horse, quite a long hind leg. Not too loaded of his shoulder and not too heavy a quarter horse. So he's more obviously bred to be in the shape of a staying horse. He won for you over very nearly a mile and three quarters. Right. And the chafe mark on his side was your boot. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> right, John, this is uh, Keen Hunter, who uh, is obviously a very nice sprinter. Um, what, what would you say are the aspects that uh, make him such a good horse as a sprinter? Well, let's start with the pedigree again. He's by uh, Diocese, out of a non alco mare, Love's Reward. It's a family of uh, splashing. She was by Patingo. It's a family of Bass and Suede who won the middle part. So you're talking about a lot of speed. So you see that's a totally different pedigree to the horse we looked at earlier, Witness Box. And then um, in terms of confirmation, he's a heavier made horse. He's a stronger horse than the last one we looked at. He has a great deal more depth and heart room, a more powerful shoulder, a lot more powerful forearm. Uh, he's a lot more bone about him. And uh, you'll see he also carries a much bigger middle, which is something you notice on a lot of sprinters, how round barreled they are through the middle. Good, powerful set of quarters and uh, a pretty decent uh, second thigh on him there. A um, little straight through the hop, but that's never bothered me too much. And altogether a more powerful specimen of a horse. And obviously, uh, always a good spot to, to look behind any horse, but especially uh, when you're looking for a sprinter type, is directly behind the quarters, and to see what strength they have in that area. Across the top of the lines, the quarters there, and the, basically the power and muscle development that you, you get in that area, if they're the type, that type of horse you're looking for. What would be the main differences in uh, the way you would work a sprinter in comparison to uh, a staying horse? I mean, as far as what actual trip in the morning would they go over? You're always, of course, looking for speed in the horse, but if you keep going for it all the time, you're inclined to wind them up mentally. Now, mm. some people will argue that great sprinters, like great sprinting uh, athletes, have got to be semi-neurotic. I'm not totally convinced of that fact. Some of the great sprinters I saw were very laid back, very relaxed horses. But I think what you are looking for in them is, 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 to, find, is, to, is to keep them sharp, keep them fresh. You don't want to overwork them. There were some old trainers up north who used to just pull them out the field and run them, you know, right. and go that way about it. Um, being with Vincent O'Brien when he had a, a good sprinter like God's Walk, it was interesting to see the work he did with him was principally over three furlongs, three and a half, 
just on the rising ground with a horse called Marinsky, who won the July Cup and got disqualified. He was probably even faster horse. Um, that was the work they did, but he was still quite happy to give them plenty of long, steady canters to keep them relaxed and to also to get a certain amount of stamina. And the thing about a sprinter is he just can't go for three. He's got to see it out at that pace. Do you think um, sprinters generally improve with age? I know, especially, you know, lately that a lot of horses retire at early ages. Do you think... Uh, yeah, I mean, I think uh, it's a great tragedy in this country that our racing program is geared principally to two-year-olds two -year and three-year-olds. There's no doubt that with horses only getting all their teeth when they're four-year-old, that they're really not fully matured until they're four. We know that. You ask the top of old American trainers like Charlie Whittingham, they'll tell you that their horses were at their best at five and six if they've had them all the way through. And that's from a horse who might have won a, uh, a Kentucky Derby or won a good classic for them at three. It doesn't matter. And I think with sprinters, that is very true. And some of the mm. best sprinters I've seen have been professionals, real old pros, you know. What do you think about uh, stalls work with, particularly with sprinters? I mean, uh, obviously, a, a, the start is quite important for a sprinter. Yeah, it is. It's of slightly less importance in this country than in America. You know, there they got to cut and go. You saw Deja, they were worried about the outside draw he had in the, um, in the Breeders' Cup. I told everyone, it's the best draw you could have. You get down on the inside and forward and break in front and throw that dirt in your face, you'll be hopping back. And he got the outside. Didn't break that well, but he had time before he got to that fence. He used his phenomenal speed to get from the outside cut in, and he lay second and probably yeah. should have won, as we know. Um, I think once a horse knows how to break, to keep taking them back there and jumping them is going to drive them crazy. And probably the most important thing with a sprinter or any horse in the stalls, and you know this as a jockey, is that they stand composed. Right. And what you don't want down there is something that's doing this and trying to sit back. And when the gates go, he's half laying back and half twisted round. We've seen horses get wound up, still win, win sprints. We've seen them do it on distance races. But true of any horse, it's like any, any athlete. You like to see them composed before the race so that they're thinking one thing and one thing only, running, and they're ready to, to do it. You don't want them losing their bottle before. As you know, John, these days it seems like uh, the ideal distance that everyone wants their horse to get is more, uh, more like a mile. But when you find that you've got a, a horse that doesn't actually get a mile and you're trying to bring him back, how do you train him to sort of sharpen him up and get him back into the sprinting? I think the man to ask on that would be Michael Stout, who brought Agile back from the Derby <laughs> to win the July Cup. Um, what do you do? I would have thought the easiest thing you do is you concentrate on their natural speed. I mean, these horses have enormous natural speed, and it's something you, you can't give it to them. They've either got it or they haven't. I mean, that's the difference right. between slow horses and fast horses. And these horses have phenomenal speed. They can get into a rhythm at speed, which is something you've got to concentrate on with a horse, not that they're doing it in fits and starts and they're not scrambling to do it. John, do you think um, that sprinters generally can take their races better than, than other horses? I mean, that they can actually run slightly more quickly in succession uh, without it taking so much out of them? I think they can, yes. They can take more races. Why? Because they're not being stressed over the distance and they're basically not getting as tired as horses on distance races. It's all well and good for the winner. If you look at some of the horses behind in the mile and a quarter, mile and a half, mile and six races, I mean, they are struggling home, some of those horses. Uh, in a sprinter, well, the fact is, even if he does get tired, he's going to wrap up real quick. He's only, he hasn't got that far till he gets to the line, and it's, and it's a less stressful experience. Yeah, yeah.